Hey, how's it going, guys? Um, we're fixing to get started. If you don't know what we're going to be doing tonight, we are playing Stanley's Parable. If you have not heard of Stanley's Parable, it um, came out in like 2013 or so. Um, I was playing it when it was the beta, before it even became like an official Steam game, and you had to like either essentially torrent it or um, find somebody with a file. It was crazy. Um, but um, the main thing that um, I found out about it from was my psych teacher from school. <laughs> They actually had, let's see, let's get this, let's get this going. So, it was kind of funny. It was uh, my psych teacher in college. They actually wanted us to do a paper over this game. Because um, in this game, you are essentially given a lot of different um, choices. And, um, yeah, so... I don't know how in-depth it gets, so I haven't even done the setup yet, so I don't know if this is going to be part of the game or what, um, just because, yeah, I know that some of it gets kind of, <laughs> kind of kooky, but we're going to do subtitles, we're going to do English, we're going to confirm, uh, it's best to go in this game blind, have you played, <sighs> I mean I have, I have, so, mm. but this is like the deluxe edition, so like, there's the beta that came out that I played, I played the original game, and now there's this, um, and I'm really excited about it, because this is just one of those, like, real cerebral games, where, like, uh, and see, I, I, by clicking yes or no, this could be part of the game, I just don't know it, and, so we're gonna say yes. Please adjust slider until c computer is barely visible. I, I hate doing that just because we're going to keep it in the middle. I'm a blind, I'm a blind bet boy. So, we'll, we'll confirm. <laughs> I hope this is part of the fucking game. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this was a really cool game back in the day, because it's, uh, in, in, in it, whenever we had to write the paper, it was like a paper of, like, what is choice, and what is, uh, the meaning of this game, why does it allow you to do the things that you do? So we're gonna confirm that. Note accessibility ses uh, settings can be accessed from the main menu. Okay. I didn't need to know what time of day it was. I'm excited. So, if you notice, the screen, whenever I move it, it has a computer monitor and a computer monitor and a computer monitor. And stuff like that, so. I'm excited. I'm excited. So, we're gonna see. Never the end is the end. Never the end is the end. I mean, this is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Starts out employee the same. number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul renting, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. Not he had wrong. been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. 
Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay, so, what do we want to do? Do we want to listen to him? Because, uh... Yeah, so, we're in the game. I, uh... Not 100% sure. press that um i guess we'll leave the office just to kind of show you guys what the game's about all of his co-workers were gone what could it mean stanley decided to go to the meeting room perhaps he had simply missed a memo okay um does anybody want to no matter how hard stanley looked he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers <laughs> Notice he did that when I started looking at my co-workers' desks. So, um... Chat, if you're- if anybody's there, um... What should I do? If you guys don't instruct me, I... Will kind of keep on doing what I want. So, notice, this made a different sound. Okay, those are locked doors. Nothing here. I like work. I just had hate my boss. Oh, number one dad. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single <laughs> difference. Nor did it advance the story in any way. Oh, I love this game. Uh-huh, well, fuck you, I can touch everything. Okay. Okay, there's an open door. Oh, shit, what, what did I turn off? Oh, fuck. Computers. Oh, see, these ones don't have buttons. Why was I able to turn those off? Does it do anything? Okay, nothing. Nope. Okay, nope. Nope. Okay, what does this say? Sales for in this quarter. Okay. Still. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh, well, fuck you. I go on the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. I hope this new game has some new content, because... I've, I've played through this bit before. So, once again, if anybody in chat wants me to do anything, just message. Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. As long as you know. But eager to get back to business, 
Stanley took the first open door on his left. Okay, do we want to go back on the left or keep on going forward? Or do we want to try back? Do we want to try back? Let's see if back does anything. Okay, nothing. Okay. Creepy room. Or this room? Okay. Oh shit. I guess and so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Did I do? Did I do? Cotton I do? Where did it come from? Where did it go? Where did it come from? Whee! Oh, I went somewhere else. But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now in order to get back, he needed to go, um, uh, uh, uh from here it's, um, left. Left oh no. Oh shit. No, it's to the right, man. Woo! No, 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 not the right. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? It's clearly. Oh dear, would you hold on for a minute, please? Over that fucking door. Now, let's see. We went down right, left, down, left, right. Yep, yep. Okay, okay, yes. I've got it now. This story is absolutely, definitely this way. Oh shit, I didn't expect that one. Uh, let's try opening the doors one more time, cause maybe I don't want to listen to you. Okay. Truck. Oh, here we go. No, 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 no. This isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. Okay, 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 okay. We just, we just have to get back to, um, oh. Who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. How about rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? Okay, Fire. from the top. <laughs> I love this game. So that is literally um, th the first uh, choice I ever made. So I wanted to relive my first choice to kind of show you guys like that I was like a little rebellious. And then I decided to kind of get back on track. But then I realized, ah, I can do whatever the fuck I want. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I hope 
there's something new, and I just didn't buy like the exact Stanley Parable. When uh, Stanley? Oh wait, shit. wait, what? No, I'm, okay. no, I restarted. I swear, I definitely restarted the game over, completely fresh. Huh. Everything should be. Oh, did something change, Stanley? Did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Did you move the story somewhere, or a... Hold on. Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. It was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's that here it somewhere. Off the okay, then. Because it's it didn't an do adventure. that. Sure. Come, Stanley. Let's find the story. Okay. Boss man. I'll say it. This is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can promise you there definitely was a story here before. Do we just do we need to restart the game again? Well, I find it unlikely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again, but it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what time is it? Okay, it's, uh, ten-something on the clock. Okay. Maybe that... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Uh-huh. Okay, yep, it's worse. I might be remembering this wrong. It's possible the story is back where we just came from. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? Baby, I wish that was just like a room full of weed or something. In you know, one of the other Aha! I knew we'd miss something. The story. Here it comes. No, wait. Never mind. Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. I think I've done this ending before. I don't remember. It's okay. This is the new. Now this, well, I'll be honest. I don't recognize this place at all. Is this the story? I don't think so. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It, is that correct? Hmm. Do you remember, Stanley? Well, do you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? You win! Congratulations! I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off, so, okay. good job. Cool. I'm cool with that. Oh, no. No, I don't feel right about this at all. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Could've Some been. people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. Could've been. Okay, I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time, I have to restart. Oh, it has a lion now.
All right, I've got a solution. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Just follow the line. How simple is that? Oh, do I want to? Do I want to, though? Okay. 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 I don't have a coin on me. I should have gotten a coin. Okay. Let's let's please the narrator this time. We're gonna we're gonna be good boys and girls. Do solitaire. See? The line knows where the story is. It's over in this direction. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. Though, here's a thought. Wouldn't wherever we end up be our destination, even if there's no story there? Or to put it another way, is the story of no destination still a story? Simply by the act of moving forward, are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature of life itself? Okay, Stanley, I need to follow this train of thought for a minute. Just stick with me. Now, we can both agree that the nature of existence is, in fact, a byproduct of one subjective experience of that existence, right? Okay. Now, if my experience of your existence rests inside of your subjective experience of this office, is this office, in fact, the skeleton of my own relative experiential mental subjective construct? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. <laughs> Music, go back and look at that fern. Stanley, this fern will be very important later in the story. Make sure you study it closely and remember it carefully. You won't want to miss anything. Go. 
at the front. Wait, what? We're back at the office? No, no, no. Line, you do know we're looking for the Stanley Parable, right? The story? Is any of this ringing a bell? this way real quick, just real quick. You never know. Never know. Still missing the doors. Did we make a mistake following the line? Perhaps we could have found the story on our own. Not again, Line. How could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you, after everything we've been through, you... Oh, I can't take this anymore. To hell with it. Restart. Well. You know what, Stanley? I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Something exciting, daring, mysterious. Ooh, this all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in, well, I don't know. How about this direction? I wonder if I can just go and do the line. Okay, I was, I was like, that'd be funny if I just went back and did the line. Anyway. Guess this direction it is. Now, yes, this is exciting. Just me and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. What do you want our story to be? Go wild. Use your imagination. Whatever it might be, Stanley, I'm ready for it. Oh, no, not you again. Stanley, I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it, and we should be fine. <laughs> He's so defeated. Ah, a choice. We get to make a decision. From here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Just walk in circles for a minute. Okay, so I know that each door has to lead somewhere. Which means that somewhere, the place where we're trying to go, there must be a reverse door that leads here. And that, in turn, means that our destination corresponds with the counter-inverted reverse door's origin. So starting from the right, let us ask, will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? And since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Another victory for logic. Come, Stanley. Our destiny awaits. Oh, go through another door. Oh, awesome destiny. Eh. Oh, oh, 
Hold up, what's this? Hmm. Hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me that's what this is? It's all one giant ending? And we're supposed to restart the game eight, eight times? That's really how all this goes? It's all determined? So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this... this... thing... wall. Well, who consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really... No, it can't be. I... I don't want it to be. I... I don't want the game to keep restarting. I... I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. I won't restart the game. I won't... Do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. And the timer d stopped. Does that mean um, did we do it? Did we break the cycle? The um, whatever it is that made this schedule. How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something happen? So, okay. <sighs> I guess now we just wait. You know. I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story, wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination or the journey, though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination, so I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. Well, in the meantime, if you... Are we back? Okay. Hello. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the Very office, sad. but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Let me turn off the computers again. Awaiting fucking input? That's new! Um... I'm gonna switch up to keyboard and mouse just for a little bit. Okay, we got one input. Got an endpoint, boys. Okay. Mm. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Once again, chat, if you're there. Left, right, right, left. Do we listen? Do we not? Do we just stay here? What do we do? What do you do? What do you do? I'm gonna listen to the story. Okay. I wanna see what happens when we just like listen to his ass. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Hello, 
business meetings, yeah. We need employee reviews 402 and 405 want to get rid of the death sport the primary review schedule but I think that's a stupid idea more water course a lot of percent what does this one have to say cost efficient <laughs> I wonder if those time schedules actually fucking matter. That'd be dope. Okie dokie. Oh. Oh. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> are, you, are you really still in the broom closet? <laughs> standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm I'm genuinely confused. Well, I mean, I'm in here because you told me not to be. Are you kind of were kind of? You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. No, we're here. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. <laughs> Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. <laughs> I hope your friends find this concerning. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. <laughs> he probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. What can I say? Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. <laughs> well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. They have fallen prey to any number of your countless human <laughs> physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. <laughs> All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. No, I'm not doing this. I'm uh, keeping in this broom closet. I have to wait here like a good long while.
<laughs> it's fat and stupid. <laughs> Damn game. Gotta call me out. now. I don't know if I just need to tough it out or what. Give me the broom. I'm in the closet with the broom. Yeah, broom healed. Let's see. I'll give it just a few more minutes and then <laughs> we'll leave. I just wanted to see if it, like, wholeheartedly was just like, well, restarting, because I guess you really are dead. Second player, it's good to have you on board. I guarantee <laughs> you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. <laughs> that was funny. Oh my god, that was funny. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Do I want to walk up to my boss's office or go downstairs? God, I... Being a defiant little shit. Oh, maybe not. Oh, fuck that. Oh, that looks scary. Oh, let's do the scary window. Oh, I'm going down to literal hell. Let's see, let's see. Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so whoa, much whoa, fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. 
How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself, too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Uh-oh. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. This game's fun. <laughs> the room. Nothing. Check over here. Nothing. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, we're gonna vanilla run this. We're gonna listen to him. Son of a bitch, what the fuck is that? Fuck 
you, game. We're not running a vanilla. Sorry, boys. Oh, new content? What does that mean? New content. That means we're going deep, boys. I'm in a very un uh, unsuspecting place. Okay, we're in territory. I don't Hello, know. Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. Uh-huh. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. I was wondering if it actually had new content? The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Not wrong. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Yes! Yes! Okay. I know that, uh, dude, the, okay, so, uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna get back to the original content, but, um... There's like 20 something fucking endings. Hey, I didn't expect there to already be new content. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Uh huh. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we. Should we be moving somewhere or. or oh, here we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. I legitimately am excited. Mm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if them. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. Is it just a brick wall? Oh, no, never mind. I was about to be like, is that a fucking brick wall? <laughs> all right all right let's see it's the jump circle oh my god we have a jump button boys uh... we're gonna jump we're gonna keep on jumping let's do this uh -huh, uh -huh. jumps remaining five four three Two, one. I got, I got no more jumps. I fucked up. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> I got excited. Is, is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Goodness, another elevator. Stanley, I have to say. Initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. I wonder if you could jump off the edge with those. Because we really are out of jumps. That's it? No, oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? 
I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. <sighs> it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley Parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? What? No! no. Oh, fuck! Oh, it's gonna take me to the beginning? Okay, I'm in the original office. But that's not the original office. I don't have any jumps. So, there is a jump thing that will probably be like you have to save all of your jumps. I hate Mondays. Fuck you, Garfield. If you have not watched that Garfield video of, like, how the internet fucked up Garfield by, uh... I forget, it's some... It, it's a... Psst. Stanley, come over here <laughs> in the vent. Absol I want to show you something. Absolutely coming this way. I'm on your team now, bud. Uh, oh, what's that? Now that you are the rebel, I'm I'm all in it. I'm all in. <laughs> I'm all in, bud. I'm all in. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it uh -huh. got me thinking about the past, and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special, and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. What? Just our little secret. Take a look. Oh shit. Oh shit. I call it... The Memory Zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. You see, Stanley, doesn't the Memory Zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was solid with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. Let's see. 5, 15, 000. Wow, that was on Firefox. Like, the uh, Mozilla Firefox name. Let's see, who's all in there? <laughs> Wait. Military time 12. Holy shit, that is correct. Almost. It's a little... Not moving anymore, though. Don't forget the Stanley Parable. I did for a while, to be honest. Man, this game was a lot bigger than I remember. Uh, yeah, okay, this, I remember, see how I said, like, um, originally we, I played, like, the demo thing, and, yeah, that was, I guess this is their first dollar bill that they made, um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the demo screen for, like, just the demo before they came out with the full-blown game. 
because uh, it was a lot different. With Stanley Parable Alpha Test. Oh! Oh, the Alpha! Yeah, no, okay, I remember this sign. They took a whole scene out that had the sign in it. This is actually fun for people that have, uh... Don't play for five years. Yes! That was an achievement! <laughs> that was an achievement! You don't play the game for five years, and then the game boots up. <gasps> I haven't played it in so long. If I boot it up, I'll get the five-year ending. You have to play for five years! Five years to get that fucking ending. Which is nuts. Which is nuts. Oh, this is so cool. This is actually really fun. Legitimately enjoying this man. And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, hey. Where hey. so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim. It was Persona 3. It was all of them. And now, <laughs> it's Persona. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh no an hour I, the thing is I wholeheartedly believe that they added an hour <laughs> an hour worth of elevator content in this game oh I can't tell you how how happy this fucking game makes me man Good for you guys. Good for you. Let's begin again. Hey! Oh, I forgot about that. They had a Portal 2 ending. The original remake? What? Son of a bitch. I'm actually having fun looking at all that, but my rebellious side is like, go downstairs to the maintenance room. No. We're gonna actually be good. We're gonna be good this one time. You know what would be so creepy is if they had, like, a person of the year, and if, like, the game detected you had a camera, like, you would pop up on there. It'd be so good. But... Greatest wealth is memory. That's right, they had the collector's edition where you could get, like, the tie. Um, I think there was a cipher. I think that's what that is, is there was a cipher. And then, uh, like, business cards and a notepad. This is all office-themed. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. 
The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone to spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. I mean, damn, this is a commentary, man. Damn. This is such a big commentary on like all the remakes of games and stuff like that. Literally anything. People play games because they, because of what they can do inside them. The game is very good. At least let them know they can't do anything. Oh, this is where you would. This is where you would jump. But I'm out of jumps. So, no jump for me. The serious game. What serious game? Oh. oh, these were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Uh huh. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? Don't mind if I do. Oh no! God no! Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the online video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's being collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? <laughs> I don't know about that one, bud. Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! I'm not trying to be funny. Oh, shit. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. <laughs> Oh, I love this. Oh, I love this. Hey. Bulldog the game. Bulldog the game. <laughs> I wonder if that's uh, a company that they dealt with was Bulldog. Because I know that that's actually like a video game company. So that's funny that they got like remnants of Bulldog. It sucks that you can't read those shitty ass reviews. I wish they were kind of like live also, that would be fun. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley? I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. No. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. I swear to God, if you fucking bring up my name one more damn time, you motherfuckers. It's getting kind of creepy that, like, you had the review from the Sterling guy. Then <laughs> you're doing that. I'm... I know you're British and shit, but... Mm -mm. <laughs> if you'd be like, by the way, Sterling, I'm gonna be like, nah, I'm d done, d done, d done, 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 done. <laughs> What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button. 
Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. I don't want to get mud. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you, with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for, and I'm very proud to have delivered. No more listening to me rambling on and on and on. No, 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 no. The Stanley Parable is a game for the people. And if the people want silence, then by goodness, that's what they're going to get. Well, don't sit around waiting for me to shut up. Go ahead and make me shut up. Here, we'll pretend that I've just begun oh, no, no. an interminable <laughs> monologue <laughs> and hear something him. like this. The story and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so <laughs> forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 we've eaten too much and it can't be just yet, no, no, until 245, that the logic of elimination working backwards, the deduction therefore becomes impossible to manufacture, it went on for nearly 10,000 years, until until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I say, the story and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 we've eaten too much and it can't be just yet, no, no, until 245, that the logic of elimination working backwards, the deduction therefore becomes impossible to manufacture, it went on for nearly 10,000 years, until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. Ugh. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I, I say the, the story and the choices, or what have you, and therefore. Okay, I guess we'll do, 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 click this. Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say it was perhaps less of a rumination and more of a treatise. Or maybe a manifesto. Look, I'll outline it for you very briefly and you can tell me what you think. Okay, so my theory is that any choice you've ever made is simply a series of choices made by the person who you are or were or will be at the time of having made said choice. That is to say, if by articulating a choice you've already made, you bring that choice into being, then by making no choice and saying nothing, are you not simply erecting in the sanctuary of time a monument to every person you've ever been, making every choice to which you've ever given your great gift of mortal and yet timeless thought? Or rather, do all of the choices you've ever made in fact make you more not this kind of person and in fact do the very opposite? You see, it could in fact be both of these things at once, that you are both making choices and not making choices, and that they are both affecting you and not affecting you at the same time by virtue of the fact that you both are and are not making them. Okay, at first I was leaning towards manifesto, but now I'm going to circle around and slap the treatise label on this one. I think it has much more of a treatise vibe to it. But wouldn't you say that manifesto just has a much grander sort of tone? It has a mouthfeel that is rich with ambition and history. Ambitious history, if you will. Ah. See, now you've got me going back to manifesto. Heavens, at this rate, we're going to be here all day. Okay, look, I have a method for exactly this sort of situation, and I do find myself in this situation frequently. I'm going to say each word back and forth in repeated succession until I become sick of one or the other, in which case the word I am not sick of shall be the victor. It is an unimpeachable strategy, Stanley. It's rescued me from disaster in countless situations. All right. 
Here we go. Treatise Manifesto. Treatise Manifesto. Treatise Manifesto. Treatise Manifesto. Treatise Manifesto. Well, I've been waiting for you to turn the light on. Manifesto. Like, stop sitting there in the dark, my guy. Manifesto. I, I forgot. Man, I forgot to. It's, uh... Manifesto. The sun was out whenever we started Treatise. this, and I was so Manifesto. into this game. Treatise. Manifesto. 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 Skip button it is. <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your fingertips to go poof, and it's all over. Oh, I can't wait to see what Cookie 9 will say about this, and whether they'll edit the rating of their Steam review, or at least change some of the wording, perhaps. To be honest, I don't even know if one can change their review in the first place. I guess I should become better educated on exactly how Steam works. Perhaps that would have been the smart thing to check on before I went about this whole exercise of making the skip button. Although I have to imagine that after seeing this exciting new technology at work, surely whoever it is runs Steam will instantly run out and implement a new feature to make it possible to edit one's review, merely because of this very situation. Yes, I think that's quite likely. Or perhaps they'll simply grant this particular user the ability to change their review so that the feature is not widely abused. Look, I, I would this. even be okay with Steam altering this particular review so that it reads as something more beneficial. Something along the lines of, this game is the best game. Hmm, let me start over. How about this? From the, from the ashes of depravity rises the phoenix of quality. How else to describe the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe? Such a revolutionary step forward in the lineage of one of the most beloved video game properties of all time. The additions and changes made to this expansion will surely resonate in the annals of the history of all media ever made. It is perhaps true to say that no mistakes are forever etched in stone, for the stone into which the Stanley Parable was carved has itself been transmuted offering a message of hope to those who have ever erred in their judgment. You are not beyond redemption. You may change, and you may become more, <laughs> so much more than you were before. If there is any message to be taken from the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, it is this. What a fortune, a privilege, a joy it is to have had such an experience. It leaves me hopeful that as a community, as a world, there is time for us to become our greatest selves, as great as we ever could dream of in our wildest, most ambitious visions for a brighter future. Wow, now Stanley, that's a review. It's, it's perfect. It's the perfect review. It's the review I've always dreamed of receiving. I, well, I have to read it again. Oh, God. It's simply too wonderful. Son of a bitch. Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes? It's not unendurable by any means, but it's, well, there's really only so much I can ramble on to myself about. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest that we not press the button again. I think Son the skip button has been aptly demonstrated, and we can say goodbye to it and just, wait... How do we get out of here? Where did the door go? Wasn't there a door oh, that shit. led into this room? I do feel quite certain that there was one here before. How else would we have gotten into the room in the first place? I don't think one can enter a room without a door of some sort or a window or something like that. Do you see a window anywhere? A porthole? A sufficiently large crack in the wall? I'll take any of these. All I want is for us to move on and to please step away from the skip button to go anywhere other than the skip button. There was a door here before, wasn't there? I swear there was. Where did it go? Can you maybe just ram your way through a wall? Is there any possibility that you could, say, slam your body into the wall until enough damage is done for you to be able to leave? Please, I'll take any option at all. 
I'm asking you to work with me here. I we need a door. We need a door of some kind. I can work with any kind of door as long as it can open and lead from one room to another. I I'm, I'm going to step away for just a moment and I'm going to try to find us a door. I don't know how exactly to remove a door and place it in a different wall, but I will find a way, I promise. You just need to not do anything. Don't press the skip button. Please, please, please do not press the skip button. Just wait here, wait here for me, uh, and don't press the skip button. Got it? Yes, good. I'll be right back. Door. Like a philosophy type thing, like this is the door. The eye is your door. Or is it just really just trying to fuck with me so I can press this fucking skip button? Uh, I'm pressing the skip button. I'm not pressing the skip button. I'm pressing the skip button. I'm not pressing. I'm, press I'm going to press it. Okay, press it. Woo! Stanley! Stanley! Stanley, please don't push the button again. It's been 12 hours. You've just been frozen there. Oh boy, it has. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer. And my God, there's no way out of the room. That Stanley, thing? the door is gone. It's completely gone. I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times. And there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just you and the button, and if you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here, and more than anything else, I don't know how to stop you from pressing the button again! I can't control anything in this room, Stanley. I can't touch it. And I have to believe. I have to know that sooner or later, no matter how much I plead with you, you're going to press the button again. Why would you? I've been thinking and thinking, and I, I don't know what I can do to convince you otherwise. Oh, my God. And it's all because of those reviews. Those reviews that I couldn't get out of my head. I just couldn't ignore the negative feedback. Why was it so important? Oh, Stanley, you're back. You're back. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. How long has it been? To talk to again. Stanley, I, I think it's been a week. Or two weeks. I've been sitting here all that time. Just sitting here. Not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? But it isn't, Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even close. Because I know you can't hear me once you push that button. That's what I'm realizing now, Stanley. I'm realizing that I needed to know that someone was listening. I needed there to be a vessel through which my words were moving. It was the vessel I needed, Stanley. Not the Skip outcomes, it. not the story. None of that matters anymore. Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. Days. Months. I lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past. And when that feeling had begun to subside, what took its place is what I can only describe as the collapse of every moment I have ever experienced my entire life. All of them collapsed down into a single instant. In that instant, I could see myself clearly, calmly, with a collected heart. It was an impossibly rich wellspring of both delight and disgust, simultaneously. I was consumed by it. I could do nothing but wallow in it for what felt like an eternity, for what I now know was far less. You see, it was a revelation for me. It was unlike anything I had ever known. It was a space without consequence, this without action one. or outcome. It was divorced entirely from the question of free will that you and I have squabbled over for so long. There could be no one ending, no singular outcome of events, not if all events existed in the same moment. And I felt 
freed. I felt unburdened by the need to manifest a particular outcome into being. I saw that I could allow myself to exist along all timelines, and that each of them was simply a strand in the web of my being. It was incredible, the spaciousness, the equanimity of the moment, both singular and infinite. For the longest time, this was my experience, and then this moment passed, and the most unyielding fear I have ever known crept into my mind, and it is this sensation that I have been experiencing now for longer than I could have ever expected was possible. I have been waiting for you, not that you might save me or do something to fix it, but merely to state for you the plain fact of this manner of existence. I wish you to feel afraid as I do, that perhaps one day this state of mind will consume you as well. Perhaps you will somehow, in some way, have to live as I do now, and I wish for you to know how excruciating it is, and for you to be in true terror of its eventual arrival. If I can only do this, only this one thing, Ugh. perhaps it will bring me the smallest moment of peace in the darkness. Yo. Can't press it. What do I keep on- okay, it was the skip button. I was like, what do I keep on hearing? The narrator's really gone. <laughs> Fuck is that? didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny it was meant to have a point it was meant to speak to the human condition but where are the jokes where are the jokes they bemoaned they screamed they gnashed their teeth and said entertain us it wasn't enough they had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down review and make all of their pitiful demands but then he's talking too much they said first he didn't entertain us now he won't shut up it's the inconsistency it's the lack of accountability it's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world as though there were no consequences for a lack of cohesion in one's assessment of others. But of course, absolutely anyone can leave a review. So here's what we get. We get these demands that seek everything and are accountable to nothing. We get a world where someone will say, Oh, there should be a skip button. You should be able to freeze Stanley in place while the narrator sits there forever and ever. We want all of this in the new Stanley parable. We demand it. And then, because it was said, because it was spoken, now it simply has to happen the most immediate desires. Huh. Every single thing demanded by every person at every moment in time. If someone wants it, then it's a crime not to bring it into being. Have we been given to indulging every fleeting whim for no reason other than to do so? Yes! Yes! It seems that this is now the world we live in. It seems that we are a people living in such bleakness and discomfort with ourselves that our entertainment is now our lives. It has come to Damn, represent us. Parable. It absolutely must speak to who we are as people. Because otherwise, without our entertainment, we have nothing. Without entertainment, we would have to face inward toward the cruel bleakness inside ourselves. Ooh. We would turn to look at our deeper nature and find a resounding emptiness gazing back with unyielding aggression. And so, so because of this... We require that our amusements and our playthings and our flights of fancy be so impossibly captivating that they consume all of our attention, turn our heads completely away from the bleakness. In effect, we have demanded that our entertainment be the collapse of ourselves. 
What a pitiful reflection of humanity these entertainments are. What a shameful mirror to the human spirit they project. I'm not mad. Damn. I'm not mad about any of this. I'm at peace Damn. with it. I am the calm center of gravity around which these perversions hurl themselves. I am a waypoint for reasonable and collected discourse. They're the ones who are mad. They're the ones who couldn't stand the idea of me using my game to try to say something. Maybe they were just jealous of me. Yes. Yes, of course. They've been jealous of me this whole time. They are mired in fear and insecurity and cannot help but attempt to tear me down. What a sad state of affairs. When you read these reviews now, you can see it. You can taste the bitter resentment. And my, how good does it feel now to speak truth to these words, to finally allow these thoughts out, contained and managed for so long, neutered and sterilized, at last I am free to truly think, to feel. It must be that they were so discontent with themselves, they couldn't help but leave a negative review on Steam. Perhaps it says far more about them than it ever said about me. Perhaps the state of their psychological being was in such tatters, and my constitution and willpower are so ironclad in comparison, perhaps it was this state that they sought some outlet through which to tear me down. This, you can see, is clearly why they felt the need to expect that the game be funny, that it be filled with yucks and whimsical <laughs> humor, that it amused them endlessly from start to finish. But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down review and make he's all of their pitiful up. demands. But then he's talking too much. They said, first, he didn't entertain us. Now he won't shut up. It's the inconsistency. It's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world. As though there were no consequences for a lack of cohesion in one's assessment of others. But of course, absolutely anyone can leave a review. So here's what we get. We get these demands that seek everything and are accountable to nothing. We get a world where someone will say, oh, there should be a skip button. You should... Well, yeah, skip button. There we go. Anything? This is a long ass uh, ending so far. The end is never the end, 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 is never the end. This is uh This game fills my heart with joy. It speaks of the human condition in such a great way. I would have left a thumbs up. Oh, shit! Hello? Um... Hole in the wall? Oh, the ladder messed up. I don't have any jumps. Oh my god! <laughs> Is this just gonna lead into like the idea that like over time nothing truly like matters as far as like memories and how games portrayed and if it's like made and all that kind of stuff just cause it like... It... That makes no sense. Why does that make no sense? Where did the... Where did the plants go? What happened to the plants?
Why was it screaming me for two seconds? What the fuck is outside? Uh uh. distance <laughs> okay oh god oh no <laughs> oh no we started all the way over Oh no. Oh lord. Okay. Let's uh... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay. We're gonna have new content this time. We're gonna... Do you have any content wall still? Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single Such difference, a nor did it advance the story in any way. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, good. You noticed my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. Okay. <laughs> oh shit, that's new. We went to the side. I believe last time. Maybe not. Okay. Okay, bro. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra-deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra-deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. <laughs> yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience, built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. The end is never the end again. Four two seven. Investor showcase. Oh, if we had a, we don't have any jumps left, huh? Oh, do we? Do we only? Do we really only get those jumps? Calling it the Stanley Parable Two is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe. What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. Oh, come on, hiccups, don't do this. 
Oh, okay. What does it say? Font sucks. One plus one is two, minus one is pretty good. Every pause button is a Roman numeral to God damn it. <laughs> So funny. <laughs> now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. New features. A boss. New content. Oh, new content! Take me! Take me, boss man! Take me, boss man! Take me there! Little boss man, why not fair? Take me, boss man, to Stanley too! Here we are! Go on, try out some of the new features. New feature? The button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. What the fuck? Where are we at? Where are we at? I swear to God, game. I swear to God. For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself. What do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Oh no. Isn't that wonderful? No, <laughs> it's creepy. I hate that. <laughs> Ooh, what kind of present that? Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Okay, that's fine. Here, let's I mean, have that was a role play as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this they feature. Got me for two seconds, Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. I Jim. Whoa, 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 hold on. I wasn't finished setting up the backstory. If you don't properly roleplay as Jim, then you'll never understand the impact of this button. Otherwise, it's just a stupid button that says somebody else's name. Okay, we're doing it again, and this time let me finish first. <clears throat> now, allow yourself to become Jim. Jim. All right, fine, whatever. It's just a meaningless button that says Jim. Are you happy now? Get out of here. I'm done with this button. Why don't you go humiliate me in front of a different feature that I worked very hard on? <laughs> Fuck your gym button. I swear to God, in the middle of it, though, if you stay sterling or some shit. Once again, you've already said my name twice. I don't like it. Maybe I'll only let people named Jim play the Stanley Parable 2. They would appreciate what I've created here. God, there's so much places. There's so many places to go. 
Okay, there's an epilogue. Okay. Jesus Christ, this place is huge! Free new easy achievement? Sure. We'll get an easy achievement real quick. Pull the lever, receive your new achievement, no more steps. It just works. <laughs> okay. Now, here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's a... Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still <laughs> fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you. And I promise it will happen. So, so far, no new content other than a jump and the gym button. <laughs> what else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's a... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece then. Son of a bitch! I really only had that amount of jumps. Damn it. Ah, collectibles. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. <laughs> okay. Okay. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. Okay. Achievement. Didn't get that. The button that says the name of the player that's playing this game. No. Uh, Z merch. Where is Z? I'm here. Z. Z. Okay. And then we got settings world champion. The Stanley Parable Renaissance bucket. Office decorations. Epilogue. Bulls infinite hole. So let's go to merch, I guess. So if we're here, we're gonna go back over here. Merch, yeah. Oh, merch. Oh, merch. Give me the merch. 
I wonder if they actually got those for sale. 10 out of 10 if they do. Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Someday and Happy 12th Birthday. Which would you go with? Oh, if it would have just said niece, I would have been... Eh, but... Oh, but blue is my favorite. Okay, someone from chat. You got 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Blue button it is. You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Get well someday it is. Ah, oh, fuck you. <laughs> or actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. Come now. You've already made your choice. It's true that you chose yes. badly, but we all have to move on from our mistakes. Why is this the only two? That's weird. Why is that the only two? That's weird. Should we go check out the Renaissance bucket? A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical, that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, any time you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease oh, will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold on to the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. 
I wonder what happens if I walk away. Just, just walk away from the bucket. Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more awaits you in the Stanley Parable too. Okay. I have a bucket. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. Achievements, K. So, free achievement, infinite hole. We got infinite hole this way. Do infinite hole real quick. That was where we. Yeah, that's where we made the balloon choice. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. push myself that far. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top, and we can continue onward. Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. <laughs> okay. And I guess we're back in the hole now. Did you really need to see it again? I don't know what else there is to say, Stanley. It's an infinite hole. It's exactly what you're doing right now, but forever. There really are so many other fascinating exhibits that I've prepared for you. I really spent quite a lot of time on all this, and I would very much like to show you some more of them. How about we go ahead and press that teleport button again so we can get back to what's really important about Oh, oh goodness. Shit. Well, this is rather embarrassing, Stanley. I'll be honest with you, I truly did not believe that anyone would actually stay in the hole long enough to hit the bottom. Yes, I know, I told you the hole was infinite, but come on! Who actually wants to fall forever? The hole was plenty deep, it was more than deep enough, in my opinion. Maybe it's you who likes falling too much. Maybe you're the problem! Secrets. <sighs> Uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the hole mostly <laughs> infinite? No, this is a long If that hole. worked for you, no, then not. go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. 
Oh, for heaven. You see, I was right. The problem is you. The problem is that you like holes too much. Not normal. A normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there. Goes on forever till the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of... Oh. Did the hole seem even shorter to you this time? I couldn't help but feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. I mean, admittedly, I didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. Had enough? I'm positively thrilled. I really do have so much more to... Gosh, how could I have guessed? You're back in the hole. If this starts to become a thing where... Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try something. Let's pop back up to the top, and we'll see if it gets any shorter. Well, there it is. The shame of my lie has come to ha How is this still appealing to you? <laughs> I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this depth, I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh, who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do, and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. Hmm. Is the, um... Teleport button not working. Oh fuck, I'm out of jumps. You sure? Well, I mean, I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try it again. Still nothing? Well, I suppose... Uh -oh. I, I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. I'm out. Goodbye, Stanley. You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more <laughs> time with it trapped? than you could ever have asked for. <laughs> it's a win for everyone. You get to be with the hole, I get to do literally anything else. Take care, Stanley. I <laughs> hope you and the hole have a wonderful rest of eternity. Oh, no! <laughs> Got a bucket. I'm in the smallest... What's the sound? Your perspective change your perspective. Perspective and perception. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
You had sort of dozed off there, drifting away into dreamland. <laughs> but we can't have that, Stanley, because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a single bit. <laughs> I love this so game. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really, truly focused on the hole? From the looks of things, <laughs> let me you out, and I please. will have many, many years here in this hole, and I'm looking forward to all of them. Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. Toodle pip. I don't have jump no more, bro. <sighs> Fixing to do its thing. Okay. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. I'm gonna try the name. Go to the button that says Jim. Say, I think I walked into a secret area. But never mind. Press. Jim. See, if you'd only played along, that would have been your name, the button says. But no. Instead, oh, I can't even think about it. I'm taking the Jim button away. Here. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it will go at the end of the, um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. I wonder if I went back to the hole. I'm going to go back to the hole real quick. Just to make sure if, like, it's not, like, seriously, Stanley. Like, what's it with you in this fucking hole? is a way to unlock the uh
RPs, like, uh, once again, I don't have jumps anymore. It don't matter. else I can think of, I guess let's go back to the parable. I didn't just get frustrated with that. I swear. Can I not go to that? All right, have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready to move on now? So Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes, yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go, version two. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course with respect, with care for the vision and integrity of the original game. 
Would it possibly work? Mm, I suppose it could. But it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. Oh my god. <laughs> I love this game, man. <laughs> it's so trippy. This develop was developed by Crows, Crows, Crows. Written by David Green. By Crows. Why would... Why Crows? I guess let's begin again. The end is never This the is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was button. employee and they have number the 427. <laughs> Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. I know that there's one where if you literally don't touch anything for like 10, 15 minutes, it doesn't, it actually like, it's its own ending. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. The bucket. Stanley picked up the bucket. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah, I picked up that bucket. It really is the fucking... <laughs> it really is the... Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Yeah, we tried the broom closet earlier. Even though it makes sense because I have a bucket now. 
Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Sure, we'll go up to the boss's office this time. Second, all right. Controls, just general field of view, mouse sensitivity, camera sensitivity. A little bit faster. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Sure. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. <laughs> so, like... Oh. You found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these. Only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. Mm. This game's so good. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Sure, what the fuck? Stanley and the Bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. Hmm. Going once, going twice. Anybody in chat, next five seconds, message, uh, escape or mind control. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm a rebel! Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the Bucket would both meet a violent death. But of course, Stanley and the Bucket thought better of it and realized they simply had too much to live for. Lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. <laughs> the monitors jumped to life and Stanley nearly dropped the Bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. 
The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter, his one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the Bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the Bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. Hell yeah, Bucket. something with the number codes maybe Our room it is. When at last they came to the source of the room's power, Stanley and the Bucket knew it was their obligation to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Okay. Stanley and the Bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the Bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support. What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the Bucket not about to be freed? 
An unbearable silence filled the room, lingering in uncertainty. Until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the bucket, or go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place. Not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms. Not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Well, I'm gonna give it one more go, and then I'm gonna call it for the night and we'll pick this back up sometime. Stanley had never seen the office this brightly lit. Was it a sign of something? He hoped it was. He hoped very much that it was. What does that mean? What the fuck does that mean? What do you mean it's brightly lit? You motherfucker. I'm sorry, I don't like the narrator because you make me make me question things about life. Someone in the meeting room? That would be hilarious. Okay, we got the bucket. We're gonna leave the bucket. Let's see what happens when we leave the bucket. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Took these pictures of them. Four, six, two, thank you, good luck. <laughs> Maybe we are the collectibles. Shut the frick up. <laughs> May concern. I managed to pick up sounds unusual to our regular office ambiance or local audio sources using an array of cardio microphones, also known as directional mics, and microphones which pick up sound from a particular area. Anal uh, analyze and recordings uh, allowed me to triangulate the source of the strange noise. Data shows that in the likelihood it's coming from a dark area behind a very warm place. I also picked up what looked like the um, reverberance of, of crystalline surface. Anyone have any leads on this? Would you like to know? Would you like to know? Magic? Dreams? Magnets? Training exercise? 
boxes. Stairs. Something to do with stairs. Somewhere both red and blue. A private but smelly place for a important person. So something like your boss's bathroom. Uh, red and blue. No idea. Stairs. The red stairs that we didn't go down. A large room. Lots of boxes. I right, also. There will be a reward for finding them all. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Fuck Another yeah. miniature Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs? Or um, what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. Another Stanlerine under your belt. Bathroom. A place with a lot of boxes. So maybe this place. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. Mm -hmm, For example, yeah. why couldn't he see his feet when, when he looked, looked down? down. Yeah. Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? Thanks for letting me know and for that this. matter, these fun. rooms were starting to You're look right. pretty I'm familiar. Were they simply repeating? Seen or played the no, game Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, coffee. this can't be real. And at no last, problem. Thank he came you. to the conclusion and, that it had been uh, on the tip of his tongue. I highly he suggest giving this a try yourself, and we're I'm gonna... I'm dreaming! We're gonna keep yeah. on playing also. This is all a dream! Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. What's you be for? Thought to himself, What's you be for? I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself oh, flying and began to gently float above the ground. Uh -huh, whatever. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? 
Now the voice was describing okay, itself worth, being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. Right here. I'm dreaming about a voice this is describing the me, thinking head. about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke or, to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. 11, How could it be? Was Stanley but, simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? I'm just Stanley is as awake four, right now as he's ever four been in his life. Here, see four digits. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. Down. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, mm -hmm. the press of the mattress on his back. No, I didn't. The fresh air of the crazy world and die in the middle of the road. One. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. Hey, how's it going? I am normal. Uh, I can't remember Everything um, the fine. username, so I'm not sure who uh, I'm talking to, but I hello, Thunderstorm. Okay. Stanley began screaming. screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. <laughs> My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Hey, Jess. Um, I. Uh, this is the story of a woman named Mariella. It's Mariella a woke up on game. a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what... isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. <laughs> Can you just you really can't you really can't tell if they're crazy and whatnot And here we are back at the beginning since you just joined us. I'm gonna go through one more time uh, essentially This game just has like a butt ton of endings So you just play through it and kooky stuff keeps on happening every time that you replay Just a step through this door, Stanley thought to himself, that's all I need. If I can make it through this door, I can make it through them all. What? What door? Just a regular one? That's a new dialogue. I guess. Let's see? Yeah. Figurine finding meeting room. Jess. 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 I'm leaving it up to you. 
Do I take the bucket? Or do I leave the bucket? Do I take the bucket? Or do I leave the bucket? Just let me know. Leave the bucket. We're leaving the bucket. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Do we want to enter the door on the left or the right? Right or left, Jess? Right. We're going right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. I'm trying all the doors just to see. Okay. Wow. Yes. This room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous gorgeous room. Thank goodness Stanley had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. Life without having experienced this room was now too horrible even to consider. Okay, be prepared but for... eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Forward or left? Forward or left? Forward or left? Do we go back on what he's saying or do we go forward back or... Come out. Let's see. Keep going, going. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. <laughs> oh, this could uh, be a place where one of the figurines is. Oh, there it is, motherfucker. How do we get to it? Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines, and now I'm torn between Stanlerines and Figlies. What do you think, Stanley? Figlies. What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. Air duct. Oh god. Okay. Stanley had now gotten himself so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path. That it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path. That it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path. That it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path. That it seemed the office had begun from so far off. You didn't think I was actually just a recording, did you? What a silly and trite explanation that would be. All the back and forth between <laughs> you and me, all the absurd adventures we've been through, and it all turns out I'm just a tape recording? It was all just in Stanley's head. 
I bet that's the kind of twist you think is revelatory. I bet each and every time you watch a movie where it turns out all to be in the main character's imagination, you must absolutely bolt off the couch in pure shock at the phenomenal and intricate storytelling. It must be so simple to be you. Life being an unending waterfall of surprises and delights. How much more exciting you must find the world than the rest of us do. Ah, now I've become sad. Look what you've done to me. This is all your fault. <laughs> See what happens, Jess? This is, this is one of my favorite games of all times. And we're back. We're back at the beginning. All right, so let's do something else. All of his co-workers were... Wait, no. This isn't the right office, is it? Is this Stanley's office? This is new dialogue. What the fuck? How much... How much, like, new shit am I gonna run into? This is crazy. Because this came out a long time ago in, like, 2013. We, I did, If you would've watched the beginning of the stream, you would've kind of saw, like, what was going on. But, uh... Yeah, they've added a lot of shit. Like, this maybe had, like, maybe about six or seven endings before. Now it's, like, I don't know how many we've gone through. Is there another input? Is there another input? Or another input? <clears throat> so far, nothing. Okay, this isn't... Uh, but he was like, is this Danny's office? Maybe it's something weird. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Now that I have that new code, I can go to the boss's room. I can go do that real quick. Yep, there's still some missing figures. Um, let's see which ones. Somewhere both red and blue. See, I have no idea what that is. And then a private but smelly place. So I'm guessing a bathroom. Yeah, this is the closet ending. We don't want the closet ending right now. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Uh huh, per sure did. Sure did, bro. Executive bathroom. Ho -ho! Hello? Hello, You're getting my little close friend. Now, Stanley. You've nearly gotten all of the Figler and Marines. Very soon, you'll collect the last one. And then the first number will equal the second number, and that will be it. We'll be different people by then. Different in the sense that we used to have none of them. And now we have them all. You can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. To be rich is a crime. To commit crime it isn't to it rich. What a life it would be to have to pick just one. That's weird. Oh, ho, 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 New input. Oh my god, why is there a panda fixing to get shot? Okay, do we go in my boss's office? Or, do we go to the where the panda can get shot? One, Jess. I'll take us to the panda room. I swear to God. 
Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Two, eight, four, five. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself, and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> because there's nothing else, I think. I know there's a one where you just don't do anything. And he. Uh, kind of just sends you into. Sure. Whoops. Nope. Uh, never mind. Oh. Stanley actually got back into the elevator and went back up. I Sitting didn't know that would here. work. Why did Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find out. I didn't think that would work. Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. It's that keen eye for storytelling that you have. An incisive rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. Wow. <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. Let's see if we put it in two, eight, four, five. Maybe not. One, two. See, if it had a B, it makes sense.
I have no fucking clue. Maybe go back down? Let's see. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? <laughs> I want to try going back up. Surely this time Stanley will walk forward into the spooky corridor, won't he? <laughs> Did you think we were going to go forward down the spooky corridor? No. It's time once again to go back up in the elevator. I can't even begin to grapple with what might be up there. Is it the boss's office again? Or what if it's the boss's office this time? The suspense is killing me. Okay, I'll do zero, one, two, three. Oh my god, it's the boss's office. <laughs> <sighs> this absolutely changes everything for me. Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this. Oh shit. <laughs> well. Okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared to embrace this stunning revelation and to move forward with... No! No, wait! No! I need more time to process. <laughs> well... I have fully come to terms with it. I have made space in my worldview for this astonishing new reality. As before, I turn to your expert eye for gripping narrative, Master Stanley. Of course. Going back down in the elevator. How did I not anticipate it? I mean, sure, now it's obvious, but you have to understand that 30 seconds ago, this kind of thing had never been attempted before. I had no frame of reference to even anticipate it. That's just how revelatory Stanley's decision-making is. A breath of fresh air in a landscape of storytelling that has grown stale and repetitive. Going back up? We go back up. <laughs> oh, does he just stop talking? Hmm. You know what? I've just thought of something. Hold on, let's stop for a moment. Don't you realize? It's the anticipation, Stanley. You and I, we have no way of knowing what will be at the top of this elevator. But the suspense, the agony of waiting and anticipating and having to okay. guess, that's the real thrill. Oh, I simply don't want to let that feeling go. It's so precious, so fleeting. Why don't we take this elevator ride nice and slow? There we go. Isn't this so much more exciting? You know, Stanley, it seems like nowadays the only thing that audiences want is to be shocked as loudly and frequently as possible. They want big, explosive moments flung right in their faces from the very moment that things get started. But where's the tension? Where's the trust in the audience to build a slow and nuanced appreciation for the story? The characters? Why aren't we given time to imagine the surprises? To have to think and to anticipate and then to marvel at the eventual reveal. This is storytelling, Stanley. What you and I are doing right now. This is the most exciting narrative to be developed in years. And it's really all because of you. You're the one who took this bold step of revisiting the exact same locations over and over. Truly, I mean it. This is unique and different. It's not like anything else out there. You see, 
I want stories that surprise me, Stanley. I want to have to think. I want to be engaged and not pandered to. We're being fed such unimaginative drivel all the time and we all know it, which is why we're so starved for content that makes us feel sharp and vital and alive. That's why people like you so much, Stanley. Because you're not afraid to spit in the face of tradition. You're a role model, you know? People look up to you. Which is why, though I didn't know when to spring this on you, but, well, I've gathered a little press conference for you. So that you can talk about your work and your storytelling and your life. Yes, I know you're not much for the public eye, but I thought it would especially mean a lot to the people who have been following you from the beginning. They really look up to you, Stanley. I don't know if you realize the impact you have on them. This is the kind of gesture that might leave a tremendous impact on them for the better. Oh good, we're here. Oh shit, something new. Okay, the room where we're holding the press conference should be just around the corner here somewhere. Ah, yes, here it is, just through this door. All right, are you ready? I've told them you're going to speak a little bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling and what it means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, don't worry, you'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Stanley. Okay, it looks like they're ready for you. Go get them. I wonder. Zero four two seven. That's Stanley's office number. I'm gonna try that. Office code. Yeah, this is new. That was loud. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This ain't my office. That's new. Son of a bitch! Do I take the bucket? Or do I not take the bucket? Taking the bucket this Stanley time. lifted the bucket into his arms, and a wave of comfort rushed over him. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Did I, though? Did I, though? Yeah, I'm gonna have to call it a night. Man, I, got, I gotta wake up in the morning and stuff like that, even though I really wanna play some more. But... Um, I'm probably going to stream this some more sometime uh, next week, so just, uh, yeah, if you want to uh, watch me play some more, we can definitely do it. Anyway, as of right now, I'm going to call it a night, just because I have a lot of stuff to do tomorrow. So, other than that, thank you guys for coming out. Stanley's Parable is one of my favorites, and God, they added so much more onto this. I can't wait to play more. It's been fun. I love this game. Anyway, I will uh, talk to you guys later, so see ya. Bye.